All right, y'all, welcome back to Common Arms Channel. Now, today we are doing a chat with a fellow named Dan. He's actually from X Military Gaming on YouTube, so he does a lot of gaming videos, and recently he's been getting into reaction videos as well. But yeah, he's a former British Army soldier, so we're going to be having a chat about the British Army ranking system and how they actually do it, because although I've worked with the uh, Royal Marines and the British Army a bunch, uh, previously, I don't really understand their rank structure. I don't know how they get promoted. I don't even know like how many ranks they actually have. So the the biggest thing is going to be us just getting a better understanding of how the U.S. military's ranking system works, at least with the uh, U.S. Army and the U.S. Marine Corps, and then also with the British Army. So yeah, we'll we'll also have a chat. So whatever other topic comes up, we'll talk about that. But yeah, it should be a good little discussion. So I uh, hope you guys are excited. So let's get into it. All right, y'all. Uh, welcome. I'm here with Dan from X Mill Gaming. So we're going to be talking about the rank structure in the U.S. military and then also the British military. Because again, I've done a bunch of videos on the uh, on the British military, but I'm not too savvy on how the rank structure actually works. And I know it's it seems like it's a lot harder for the uh, for the Brits to get promoted. So is that what you're saying, Dan? It takes like 12 years to make sergeant. Yeah, you're looking, you're looking at sort of 12 years for sergeant. Minimum four years for a lance corporal. Wow. Probably another two years. Yeah, well, <laughs> and a lot of units, you won't even get a sniff at going on the lance corporal course unless you've done an operational tour. Really? Or you've got some kind of experience. Yeah, and I, th I think it might be, you know, obviously the British Army is a lot smaller than the US military, so there probably is a lesser need for um, NCOs, but... Right. I wouldn't yeah. say it was harder. It's just longer. Um, I mean, I don't know what you'd have to do to be promoted um, in terms of courses and so on. So I, I, I wouldn't know if it was harder or not. It just seems like in the U.S., from what I've heard, it's just a lot less unregulated because in the right. U.S., if you do a certain amount of things, then you get promoted. And also, if you if you've been in a rank for a certain period of time, you just automatically get promoted. Really? So, yeah, which is wow. It's kind of a shame that that's new to the U.S. Army. I don't know if the Marine Corps yeah. does that, but yeah, it's one of well, those I know, things. Well, for example, so like I said, for 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 Lance Corporal, which is the because obviously we don't have sort of first private specialist or that. We just have private Lance Corporal Corporal, and you're looking at a six week course just to get to Lance Corporal. Okay. And then to get for to get to Corporal, you have to do a thing called Section Commander's Battle Camp. Which is six months down Brecon, uh, the mountains in Wales. <laughs> okay. Six, six months just getting beasted down in Wales. Down. And then for sergeant again, it's another six months. Okay. So, gotcha. you know, yeah, and I know the Gurkhas, for example. I know you did a video on the Gurkhas. Right. If you don't finish top third of that training course, you will not get promoted, and you only get one opportunity in the Gurkhas to go and do that course. So you, really. Yeah, it's it's. They they they're really sort of strict on it. Um, yeah, I guess it makes sense, especially since it's like a smaller force within a already well, small it, yeah. force. But that's pretty rough. They can they can literally pick and choose, you know. So they they do. Um, we we had a Gurkha transfer to my unit who did a course fifteen years previous, and then he got promoted <laughs> at our unit. He'd done the course, right? So he was eligible for promotion, but just within the Gurkhas, he would never have. Would never have got promoted. Mm. Okay, so it does sound pretty similar as far as like the course, but your guys yeah. is again. I think the requirements are just going to be a lot more stringent. So, how many ranks do you guys actually have in the British Army? So, if you're talking just uh, non non commissioned officer ranks, right? Got Lance Corporal, uh, Corporal, Sergeant, Staff Sergeant, and then you have a couple of Sergeant Major ranks. Okay. Um, so you have your, your W02 and then W01, which is like an RSM. So you have Sergeant Major and then Regimental Sergeant Major. Okay. Um, so we haven't got many, but you you guys have got a lot. Yeah, so <laughs> we have we have nine like pay grades, but then each really? pay grade might have like different ones. So the Army is the worst because you'll have Private PV2, which is just Private yeah. 2, PFC, Specialist, and then specialist, you can also be a corporal, which is the same pay grade. And then you go to sergeant, staff sergeant, sergeant first class, master sergeant, first sergeant. And then you have you also have like a, a sergeant major and a command sergeant major. So it's yeah. kind of similar. So I guess it yeah. just depends on whatever like billet you're assigned. But um, yeah. uh, the Marines, they have 
what do the Marines have? Is it like Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps or yeah, so something like that? Marines is a little bit different. That is private PFC, Lance Corporal, Corporal, Sergeant, Staff Sergeant, Gunnery Sergeant, and then you also yeah. have First Sergeant, Master Sergeant, and then after that, it's you have Master Gunnery Sergeant or Sergeant Major, right. but then yeah. the the one Sergeant Major in charge is the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. See, I, I remember getting told off in Camp Levenek by the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. Okay. Um, <laughs> what did you I was do? In your, I was in the, you guys call it the PX, don't you? Yeah. The PX, the, yeah, I was, yeah, in, the I was in the PX and um, I had my, my beret on because that's just oh, okay. you know, a, Brit yeah, a British so Army thing. Wearing it indoors. And he, yeah, so he'd come over and, you know, hey man, this isn't a naffy. Oh like, my God. Who, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I would have told him off too, honestly. Well, this was it, but on the way out, there was a picture of him on, on the door next to the you know the sergeant major of the, of the marine corps like, yeah <laughs> whatever <laughs> you figured he would so, know yeah. he would know like not to mess with other people who have different uniform regulations uh, i don't know i don't know but he wasn't happy he wasn't a happy man i can't remember his name either but he did come and visit us while we was in our so, fob what year was this uh 2013 sergeant major barrett i think i don't know was he i honestly can't remember was he a bald white bald. dude no, he was a he was a, a bold black guy. Oh, so our major green possibly then. Yeah. Okay. Possibly. Yeah. Okay. Quite tall. Right. Really right. likes a really likes a who are. Yeah. <laughs> or hoorah, whatever yeah. you say. I think after like <laughs> E seven, after like gunnery sergeant, they're always like that. They just get yeah. brainwashed again. <laughs> so but like those. in the in the U S Marines and the U S Army, you have like your lower enlisted, which is like yeah the lance corporal and below or specialist and below. And yeah. then you also have your NCOs and then like your senior NCOs, which is like yeah. E seven and above. So you got do you guys yeah. like separate it at all as far as like importance? Yeah, you've got your your junior NCOs, which is your Lance Corporal, Corporal, and then your senior NCOs is also your sergeant, staff sergeant, and then your sergeant major. Um but one thing that did surprise me was I was looking at the you guys call it a squad, don't you? Your squad makeup of the of the U.S. Army, and I, I, it surprised me that it was a sergeant in charge of a squad. Usually, a squad leader is a sergeant. Right. Yeah. So, so in, in the U.S. Army, it's a staff sergeant. In the Marine Corps, it's a sergeant in, in charge of a squad. It's different. Yeah, so that that really surprised me. Because what is it? Nine men to a squad? Is it? Something yeah. Like it, in the Army, it's nine. In the Marine Corps, it's thirteen. Yeah. So, so like for us, we would call that. Well, we have our closest thing would be a section, and that's eight men. Okay. Um, and you'd have six privates, a lance corporal, and a corporal, and that would be your section commander would be the corporal. So a sergeant mm. wouldn't usually be in charge of anything less than thirty men. So that okay. really surprised me compared right, to right. the US military, where everything seems to be sort of pushed down a step. If you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So in the army, it's pushed down a step when you go to the Marines because an E six yeah. goes to an E five squad leader. So yeah. I think, for, yeah, for you guys, it's like another step, which makes a lot yeah. of sense because we have like a bunch of lower enlisted ranks for some yeah. reason. Yeah. So I would say I would say a corporal in your in the British Army would probably be like a sergeant in the Marine Corps, maybe even like yeah, a staff it sergeant. Like it. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I talked to Leon from a uh, from a uh, Bootneck Gamer, and he's a corporal, oh, yeah, yeah. but he's been in for yeah. the same amount of time as I have. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird. That's confusing. Yeah. It's much. It's a much slower sort of step up the the ladder than, like I said, I think that could just be down to just pure size of the U.S. military. You need yeah um, extra NCOs, for example. Um, yeah, the, you know, the British Army doesn't. <laughs> we, we've we've hardly got one. Right. I think it. Well, it's like it's crazy because the U.S. Marine Corps and the U.S. Army have like units all over the place, yeah. so the infantry is always undermanned. So like yeah. whenever you meet those requirements, you're pretty much going to get promoted, unless like the, yeah. the higher ups think you're a turd or something, then you won't. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So you guys have your like your I guess your academy. So you have your schooling. Yeah. Do you have to do yeah. like a, a board or anything? Um, so it depends on what unit you're in. So infantry, there isn't really a board. Okay. Um, that's just purely doing things like uh, section commanders battle camp and 
you know the actual courses obviously you have to ask to go on those courses or be recommended right. um, but we don't have a board per se that is more i think that's more of a support arms thing so like the med co- med medical regiment right you know the med corps the rents rlc <laughs> <laughs> um, didn't want to say it but <laughs> yeah okay yeah yeah but they okay. are they they have more boards than than um the infantry i, I watched is it uh moose where is it she uh, does a she's hmm. a she's army and she does youtube videos i know who you're videos. talking about but i i can't actually put the name to the to the face yeah, she, she's done a few funny sort of board video yeah. sketch you know what i mean yeah um, they, they can get pretty weird yeah as well as <laughs> is it combat veteran yeah as well. <laughs> yeah He's got a few funny board ones <laughs> yeah he does a lot of funny videos yeah, yeah it's so. it's funny people take those like way over the top sometimes yeah yeah so, no we don't we don't have boards or anything like that not in the infantry anyway mm, that's that's kind of good so your academy seem like a lot longer than ours though because we do have a Lance Corporal seminar, which is like, yeah. I think like a month or something. And then the Corporal's course will be a month. And then yeah. Sergeant's course will be about a month and a half. And it's pretty similar really? in the US Army. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> you well, said, that's really short. You said yours is like, it's like six months for a Corporal? Yeah, yeah. And then you're looking at another six months for, for Sergeant as well. I, I know it gets a little bit longer when you start talking about the, like the higher ranks, but it, I still yeah. don't think it goes more than like three months, honestly. I mean, to be fair, I think I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure well, our course is sort of only really extend to sergeant. Once you start getting to sort of uh, color sergeant or color sergeant, staff sergeant or sergeant major, um, there may be a course. I don't know. But mm. it wouldn't. It won't be a long one because you've already got that experience. So for us, a right. a color sergeant or a staff sergeant is is an admin role. They okay. will control the stores and supply. So on exercise or deployment, they will make sure that the the men on the ground have all the ammo they need, the food, the water. That's right. kind of their thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then sergeant major, you know, is is basically for our sergeant majors, it's sitting behind a desk, discipline issues. Yeah, it gets. Well. I think in the Marine Corps, when you get to be a staff sergeant, that's where it gets a lot of administrative work. And then in the Army, yeah. it's sergeant first class where it gets really administrative. Yeah. Now, do you guys have like, we have broadening assignments, which basically are like drill instructor or you go and be a recruiter. Do you guys get pulled out of your job to do anything like that? So everyone wants to do recruiting. That's kind of really? <laughs> what, you know, people would give a left nut to be on the cr- recruiting team. Really? Uh, yeah, because that's usually just, especially if you, if you can get attached to a careers office, for example. Right. Um, it's, it's kind of the best posting you can get because it's just sort of two years sitting in your local town. Right. You know, work, working eight till R4 or whatever it is, and then you, that's it, you're off home. Hmm. Um, so there are there are extra assignments like that. Um so once you get to full screw, you're usually expected before you can get sergeant. You're usually expected to do a two year stint at the infantry training center. Okay. As an instructor. Right. Uh, so once you've done that, then you'll come back, and that's kind of when then you will take your next step to sergeant. Um, mm, that makes a lot of sense. Us- yeah, and then you're usually expected to go back to ITC and run, do a do a stint as a platoon sergeant. Okay. And then you'll come back and that's when you'll be looking at sort of doing your next rank. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense because it's still kind of keeping you in your job and you're just sort yeah. of reinforcing everything. But yeah, yeah the, we do have a combat instructor in the Marine Corps. Um, that's like something you can do. But most of the time it's yeah. just like you either become like a drill instructor or a drill sergeant or do recruiting. And it kind of just knocks people out of their flow or their job. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. Oh, no, it's, it's all very sort of, it's all very much whole encompassing so mm-hmm. if a corporal will be, you know, they'll do the whole shebang sort of as part of their six-month course. Right. So drill instructor, stuff like that. That's why they can basically finish their their six-month section commander's course. Right. And they could literally next day go to depot as an instructor because that's what the six-month course, a lot of it focuses on instructing. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, the- 
because they're obviously going to be expected to teach, you know, and instruct sort of new new soldiers within their section. That's so yeah, it's a, a very much, you know, centered on sort of instruction and and teach the teacher. I think they call it over here. Yeah, right. I mean, it's a it's a better way of doing it. I think people think the broadening assignment helps people with like public speaking and learning how to yeah. be a leader, but in reality, it kind of just kicks you out of your job. It's kind of a weird way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, like the admin of stuff, administrative stuff comes later on. I'm sort of moving into administrative stuff right now, but again, I'm trying to just stay in a, in a position to where I'm not doing that. But yeah, well, it's, it seems like it, it does mirror it very similarly. It's just, yeah. you guys are a step down, which I guess it, it's starting to make sense. It's pretty similar, but yeah. I do like how you guys have the, all the stuff built into the academy itself. So you don't have to go out of your job and do it. Yeah, 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 it makes sense. So do you have like an evaluation system to get promoted or like, I don't know, anything to review your um, competency? So not really. It's, it's kind of more so, I mean, we do obviously have our sort of mid-period appraisals, you know, okay. where it's, you'll go there and it's just three paragraphs of, you know, he's a fat mong, but he's actually a good player, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. So, uh, but yeah, we have that, but in terms of going for an NCO course, it, it's really more of a case of ask. I say asking, um, <laughs> speaking to your platoon commander, platoon sergeant, whatever, um, right. and really seeing what they think. Okay. And then asking, and you know, hopefully they don't tell you to get stuff. Kick you know rocks. I mean? so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's more of asking. It's not really. Like I said, that's more of a board thing, which, like I said, the, the remps would have. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's just taking it upon yourself to actually go for it yourself. No one's forcing you. No one forces you to go and do it. Yeah, that's that's cool. It seems like you have a little more control over it, at least. But Oh, yeah, you know, like I said, no one forces you to do anything. Um, I don't want to say that. No one forces you to do an NCO course. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So... Mm. Yeah, because we have in the Marines, we had pros and cons, which is basically like you get evaluated, I think like two to, to five. And like yeah. normally you have to get like a 4.5 to be looked at as like a solid Marine. And then you also get like uh, NCO evaluations later on. And it's kind of the same yeah. in the Army. So I'm in a position. Yeah, I know. It's it's weird. <laughs> and now because I'm a staff sergeant to get to get E7, I need to be yep. looked at basically through my evaluations. So they yeah. need to look at it and basically I need to look at it on paper to get promoted. So yeah. It's kind of a weird system, but I like how you guys have a little more control over it, at least a little more say in where you want to go and when you want to do it. I think, again, a, a lot of it comes down to just the fact we're smaller. You know, we, we yeah. have more control over it. Like I said, I think the, the British Army now, I think, is about 70,000 strong. The US That's crazy. Is, it's, it's like a hundred. No, Marine Corps is like 175 right now. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, you I know, think... we're, we're, yeah, we've been slowly eroded away for the last 10 years or so. So, do you guys go in like waves of like how many people you have, and then all of a sudden you kick people out? And oh no, it just 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 keeps going down and down. Really? And down. <laughs> government, government keep making more cuts. They, I think personally, hmm. I think they want to move to a more reservist force. Okay. A more part-time force. Hmm. Um, cause they, they keep cutting the regular army and trying to increase the reserves. So mm. that's that's kind of weird. Yeah, I know for us it goes in like waves. So they'll lower the standard, yeah. get a bunch of people in, yeah. offer like you can get twenty thousand dollars just for signing up for three years. Yeah, it's yeah. insane. Well, yeah, well, and it was I think a year before last. I think the recruiting situation for the British Army was shocking. For the reserves, <laughs> sorry, for the reserves it was shocking. I right. think more more British citizens actually went to join ISIS than joined the reserves in a one year period. <laughs> wow. Just goes to show no one wants to do it. Unfortunately no one wants to do it. It's, the British Army is known as just being bullshit central. So no one wants to do it. No one's got the time for it. Are the benefits like pretty decent whenever you're actually in? Um pay's not bad. Free medical. I mean, we, we get yeah. free medical per se anyway. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but like free free dental is good. Um, mm. You can't knock the dental. Right. The housing is good if you're married. The housing's pretty good. Yeah, it is kind of clutch here too. Um, yeah. 
so there's not really massive benefits. I mean, obviously for you, things like medical care, right? You know, it's a massive benefit really because you're not paying for that. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Because if you if you were paying for it or if you had to pay for insurance, it's yeah. like way more. People don't really understand that when they're yeah. in the military, though. Yeah, so we're quite we're quite lucky. I mean, the medical care is good because you you've got easier access to to things like doctors because obviously you've got your medical center and you can just sort of you haven't got to wait, right, um, right. which is a problem we do have trying to get a doctor's appointment with the on the NHS. <laughs> right, yeah, I've it, heard it, that. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I'd rather I'd rather that than pay thousand pounds a month or whatever it is for insurance. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the same here. Yeah. Like. You have to pay for insurance. You have like a bunch yeah. of bills anyway. So the military yeah, does a pretty good job of trying to like sweeten the deal with like yeah. bonuses. If they, if you're like reenlisting, I think I yeah. got like, I got several thousand just for reenlisting for like a few more years. And I yeah. wasn't even like under strength at the time. So the, mil the US we, military is pretty good about throwing money at people. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had, we had bonuses. I don't know if they still do it now because I've been out, I've been out for five years. Right. You used to have your, I think it was four year money, six year money, seven year money, and twelve year money. Okay. So you had four lump sums you could take, um, and that was just basically time of service reward sort of thing. Okay. Um, yeah. So you had to pick, you had to pick two of them. You know, you could pick your say four and seven, or your <laughs> your six and twelve year money, and or you could just save it all up and take one because it was kind of like one pot, and then if you took it okay. there. It would, less at that point yeah it was wow. it was weird um yeah i know we yeah. get we get like bonuses so like if yeah. you're once you're up to four years it becomes every two yeah. years but every two years you get like i don't know maybe 200 more dollars or a paycheck or something <coughs> so your so. reenlistment is it do you have to do you sign back up for x amount of years do you right so i joined the marine corps i signed for a five-year contract normally it's four years in yeah. the U.S. Army, you can do like three or four. Most yeah, people yeah. just do three. But yeah, once you're like a year out, you can decide if you want to reenlist. In the yeah. Army, you're pretty much guaranteed to reenlist. In the Marine Corps, it's, yeah. like, it's a little bit harder. But yeah, you're just yeah. like, I'll sign up for six six more years, five more years, four more years. So you oh, decide so you that. Actually, so you actually have to re-up for an X amount of years. Yeah, yeah. Right. See, for us, it's a four-year minimum contract okay um but once you, once you hit your year three point it just becomes a rolling contract then okay um, that's cool so you have to give you have to give a year's notice anyway right. so you'd have to let them know a year before and that you want to leave and then a year later that's it you're done mm. but yeah it'd just be a rolling contract after that there's no minimum term you know what i mean it's just right you've done three years now any point now you can give a year's notice and mm. and that's it you're done yeah, I can um, see why people would, would get out then because, I mean, you could probably just be seeking a civilian job while you're doing your rolling contract. Yeah, and once yeah. you land something, like, that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, people do. People, especially once they've signed off, um, they'll take that year to, they've still expected to do their jobs in that year. <laughs> they will, Yeah, they'll know, check out. Around. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, I guess it, the Marine Corps or the Marine Corps and the Army system sort of just hooks you in, so you can't really, you can't even like visualize civilian life or think about how nice it'll be because you got like Didn't several years, <laughs> four year, just another another four year contract. No. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if you guys have quite a a large number of things like AWOLs, no, absent yeah. without leaving like that. Yeah, so AWOL, AWOL is like the army term, but in the Marines, yeah. it's it's unauthorized absence, basically the same yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's either that or somebody will injure themselves and then ride that so they can get a medical yeah. board, which, yeah. I mean, and then they get money uh, on top of that. Yeah, exactly. Can't be a medical board. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> they did it the smart way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, get a load of money while they're right. It kind of sucks. It's, you see that a bunch in the army, but it's kind of yeah. a pain in the butt. The problem, the, what we have at the moment is because obviously mental health now has become a sort of a big thing um, right. in both countries. Because obviously, you know, you guys have a massive, as well as us, you know, both both countries have got a, quite a, a big problem with sort of veteran suicide and, yeah. and stuff like that. But there will be people, and I'm sure you probably know some people yourself who will play the 
the sort of PTSD card to, <laughs> even though you know that they've done absolutely nothing. You All know right. what I mean? So, well, I I know some people that will, you know, oh, you know, they've, they've they've seen the most traumatic things in the world. When I know for a fact they haven't, they've not done anything. You know what I mean? But they'll play right. the the card to try and get yeah. out that way. It's a quick way to do it. It is a quick way to do it. We had one person who claimed PTSD because he said he got hazed when he was, you know, lower enlisted. But it was like 2013 yeah. at the time. There wasn't yeah. really a whole lot of hazing going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's kind I mean, of a shame. Have, yeah, it, it, it is because it detracts from from those who, who really do struggle. And I mean, we we had a guy get out for for mental health. He pretended to ride a bicycle um, as he walked around camp. You know, so he was, yeah, he rode an invisible bicycle. That's a, that's a way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> that is a hell of a way to uh, do it. Honestly, you would watch him cleaning this invisible bicycle outside the block. He'd be there cleaning it. And on the final day, he walked up to the gatehouse, went to the sergeant major, said, here you go, sir, can you hold my bicycle for me? And the sergeant major played along. He was just like, yeah, okay. And as he turned around and walked out that camp, he's like, right, I don't need that anymore. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> so he played the system. He played it massively. Wow. That uh, one to him. <laughs> I guess, yeah, if you're going to take it that far. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. well, that's it. If you're going to take it that far. <laughs> he did it. So, yeah, that's it. But no, it's um, medical discharge. Yeah, people, people know how to play the system. And I mean, like I said, fair enough to them. Yeah. If they, if they can do it and get the money. Then. Yeah, I think that the U.S. military is doing a better job now with people who actually yeah. have like issues and whatnot. I think now yeah. they're trying to make it so you can go to like a mental health facility and get treatment without having to report it to your chain of command. Because again, yeah. you get that that stigma associated yeah. with people trying to to do all that stuff. But yeah, yeah you, well, you guys have your, your VA as well, then is it the VA service yeah, the, and? The VA, yeah, it's for like the yeah, the veterans when they get out. But honestly, the VA is not the best resource for that sort of stuff. Yeah, no, I've seen a lot of um, stuff to do with the VA. It's, you know, massively underfunded and overstretched. <laughs> it's kind of like our NHS, un- underfunded and overstretched. Yeah, that's, that's uh, probably a good representation, honestly. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's better than nothing, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Now, the yeah. only other thing I was trying to figure out, so in the Marine Corps, at least, we have, whenever you you become a corporal, yep. an NCO, you get a NCO sword. Well, you have to buy an NCO sword <laughs> because, you know, the Marine Corps yeah. likes doing all the, the drill and ceremony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the officers have their own sword as well. And then you also get new uniforms. So do you guys have any of those goodies that come along with, with getting so, a new rank? once you get a rank, you have to get a thing called a mess dress. <laughs> okay. Uh, which costs a lot of money. I think. I think on average, you're probably talking about nine hundred pounds. Yeah. So I don't I know what those dollars. Yeah, we have ours uh, is about eight hundred to a thousand. Yeah, swords, not really a thing. <laughs> uh, that that's more of an officer thing. Okay. They yeah. they like to be special. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it's mess dress is it's the big one, and a lot. Of, to be honest, a lot of people will not buy it. Right. Um, yeah, a lot of people but then you have, like the look of it, that. It just, well, it, it it's great, but if you're just a young, yeah, a young sort of large corporal, you know, the last thing you want to be doing is is trying to find, you know, thirteen hundred dollars from somewhere for for a, a, basically a uniform you're going to wear. Right. Yeah. Like twice. never. You know, yeah. Exactly. So you also have the the mess as well. So once you hit lance corporal, you know, obviously you get the corporal's mess and. Okay. That's sort of a, a private a private club for mm. for junior NCOs. Gotcha. So basically, yeah, to drink. You get charged for that each month as well. So really? That's another another benefit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it. I think I think I think it's more like fifty pounds a month. They get charged for it. it comes straight out of their wages. Okay, um, so when you're like lower enlisted, do you have money taken out for your meals anyway, like the chow hall? Oh no, the. the the British Army moved away from free food now, or oh. not free food, but it used to come out of your wages, and oh. you know, you you were guaranteed three sort of meals a day, no matter what. Um, 
So the British Army moved away from that now, and you have to pay for pay for all your food. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which is really sort of backfired um, on the British Army. And <laughs> really. The British Army has a massive sort of nutrition problem at the moment because, again, you're talking young, young right. teenage teenage lads who getting all this money. You know, they they'd rather spend it out on a weekend. Yeah, than, that's true. You know, they're not they're not thinking about budgeting for food and stuff. So. You end up having soldiers basically they'll just eat noodles. <laughs> yeah. That's all they can afford. I didn't even consider um, that. I know when I was when I was a Lance Corporal, I wasn't married at the time, so I yeah. was forced to go to the Chaw Hall. Yeah. But I was like, dude, I just want my own money so I can go to the commissary and buy like yeah. a good diet. But that is true, a lot of people would just spend it on alcohol or yeah. something. So yeah, like I said, it, it started because married men so everyone used to get charged for the the same for food. Um uh, and then obviously the, the men who lived sort of on married quarters, they didn't live in the block. You know, they were getting fed at home by their wives, spending right. their money on food. Um, so they started, they moaned about it basically. Why am I paying for food that <laughs> I'm not eating? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it backfired massively because the food was better quality because everyone was paying into the same pot, but only say half of those people were actually eating the food. So yeah. there was always extra There's plenty to go for, around. Yeah. So, and then it became... You know, a civilian company started running the food, and they only care about profit. And mm. so, yeah, if, it's definitely worth a Google uh, British Army food problems because you'll see, on you know, you'll see chicken with maggots in, and right, right, right. You know, yeah, it's it's really bad. There's a big, big problem at the moment with with the British military and and it's it's food. Let's say. Yeah, I th I, the issue right now is a lot of people think the food quality is pretty garbage in the U.S. And it really depends on where you go. I know in North Carolina, yeah. North Carolina, at least Camp Lejeune, it was freaking dreadful yeah. in most places. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if you are getting forced to pay for crappy food, it's an issue. But yeah, a, a lot of people get some pretty nice food and they don't really consider that. Yeah, the best food I, the best food I ever had in the British Army was in a tent. In a field, <laughs> uh, in the middle of nowhere, because we had a, a general coming to visit. Oh, that's so, when all the good food you know, comes out. All the, all the good food came out. <laughs> yeah, that's so, crazy. Yeah, that was shit out. <laughs> that's crazy how that works. All the rice Look, goes. I saw your. Go oh, ahead. <laughs> I was, was going to say I saw your video on British Army rations. Yeah, dude. People did not like uh, my opinions on British food. <laughs> British Army rations right. are shocking. I still shockingly bad. People were saying that it's so nice, like, oh, you're gonna love it. It's like you hated this ration, but you'll love it. Like I still have these biscuits because I I, uh, I saved it because I knew people were going to be like, dude, why didn't you try it with this or why didn't you try it this way? So I saved all the stuff I didn't finish, and of course everyone's like, you have to try it with tea. Like, what are you doing? Well, what did what what was your main what did what was the main meal? You uh, there, there was like three there was like the all day breakfast there yeah. was the um the pasta ball yeah. bolognese and then there was something else oh there's a curry i forgot what the name yeah. of it was it was so lamb, your, the your, lamb rogan. Ration, the, your ration the mental for the barbecue rib <laughs> yeah like, yeah I what mean, is this sorcery <laughs> i know I'm, I'm used to like that stuff and then i get like all yeah. this i don't know I was I was but, hyped up about yeah. it, I guess. No, British British rations are, are <laughs> nasty. Um, it's a lot more since since sort of Afghanistan, Iraq, the more hot weather environments. We've moved they've moved for some reason to more like fish food and <laughs> pastas and right. It's foul, absolutely disgusting. You won't. Oh no. Dude, no. have you ever had the uh, the MRE pizza? Actually, no, that was probably, yeah. yeah. That pro I think that, you had it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty good, not going to lie. All right, I think that's a pretty good little discussion. Yeah, it's um, definitely a lot more infer informative, sort of my side of things as well. Uh, because like you, I didn't really know much about American ranks, just that there was a million of them. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, there uh, there are a lot. <laughs> there used to be more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's insane. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But... It's like it's like you guys you guys copied us and then went just add a few more in there. Well. Yeah, yeah, it's try it. Yeah, it's like a, let's one yeah. up them. Let's one up them. Literally yeah, exactly. add stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So no, that was good. That was good. Uh, 
good shot, man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, well, if we want to do like maybe like training or something, any other yeah. discussion, that'd be cool too. Yeah, I think that could be really sort of interesting because again, um, like you were saying yesterday on the the live stream about the, you know you guys seem to like to fight light a lot more. You take that a lot more seriously than yeah than sort of what we do. Um, so that could be really interesting to go into and and sort of pick apart. Yeah, for sure. All right. Yeah, well, it was a good, right, cool, good, good little chat. I appreciate you. Yeah. Again, if you guys want to go over to uh, to Dan's channel, I'll put the link down in the video description. So by Cheers, all means, man. yeah, head on over. But, yeah. And again, good. well done on the hundred thousand. Hey, appreciate it. Here's to uh, here's to a million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might not have to sign. You might not have to uh, re up. <laughs> yeah, I'll be retired by then, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep keep the good work going, man.